Welcome to Hawassi River Heritage Center. We have a very important story to tell. Come on in and let me show you what we have to offer. Our story starts with late prehistory, the Mississippian period. We have several artifacts on loan to us from the Frank McClung Museum at UT. These artifacts were dug on Hawassi Island, not far from here, where the Hawassi goes into the Tennessee. As we move around the room, we tell the story of the Cherokee people. After the 1819 treaty, which was the Hawassi Purchase, the Hawassi River was the boundary between the Cherokee Nation and the United States of America. At that time, the Cherokee Agency moved in here. And eventually, we went on to Fort Cass and the Cherokee removal. There were three immigrating depots during the removal. Gunner's Landing at present-day Gunnersville, Alabama, Ross's Landing at present-day Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Fort Cass, which was here at present-day Charleston. General Winfield Scott was stationed at Fort Cass. Every order for removal at all three immigrating depots went through General Winfield Scott. The panels behind me tell the story of events that went on during that time. The remainder of our exhibit tells the story of Charleston and Calhoun's place in the Civil War, industrialization, African American history, and more current local history. The exciting thing is, we have room to grow and can tell even more stories as we learn them. We're standing here behind the Hawassi River Heritage Center at our interpretive trail. We um, worked with the federal government on an RTP grant, Recreation Trails Program grant, and we were able to get funding to do this awesome walking trail um, that puts you in the footsteps of the Cherokee because all over this area was the Cherokee Nation and communities where the Cherokee lived. Um, as Darlene and I started learning more about this uh, story that we wanted to tell, we realized that the story is all around us and we really needed to do something to put people on the land and, and be able to educate you as you walk through the community. Um, as you can see, there are signs behind us that give quotes from each side of the issue, which was keeping the land as the Cherokee land or removing to the West. And so you have comments from military leaders, and uh, government officials on one side and then on the other side you have the comments and the heartfelt pleas to stay on their land from the Cherokee people and from missions. We're in Calhoun, Tennessee. It's a small town, the oldest town in McMinn County. It was formed in 1819 when the Hawassi Treaty between the white man and the Cherokees took place, Major John Walker received this reservation, which in turn he sold into lots and established the town of Calhoun. It was the first county seat of McMinn County and the courthouse was originally located here. McMinn County's government started here in the small town of Calhoun. In 1819, Calhoun was a part of the United States. Charleston was still a part of the Okoye District of the Cherokee Nation. But the two towns worked together and have been known throughout history as the Twin Cities. We know that the Cherokees in the Charleston area, which is the Okoye District, came to Calhoun to attend church to go to school and to use the mills. We also know that through this grave here of Sarah Elizabeth Ross, the daughter of Lewis Ross, that some Cherokees are buried here in the Calhoun Cemetery. So there was a good connection where the white man and the Cherokees worked together. About 
200 years ago, the banks of the Hiawassee River were a lot different than they are today. Cherokee families lived here, there were missions, there were farms, there was a thriving community here called Walker's Ferry. Now this present day Charleston is the uh, north side of Bradley County and we're right here by the Hiawassee River. This would have been the border of the Cherokee Nation and in 1819, once the Hiawassee Treaty was signed, across the river would have been the United States of America. So if you were a little Cherokee boy or girl standing here in 1820, you would have been looking across the river to America. It's hard to believe or hard to grasp that there was another country here, another sovereign nation, the Cherokee Nation. When the Cherokee Nation was here, there were ferry crossings all up and down the Hiawassee River that crossed over to the other part of the Cherokee Nation and then eventually the United States of America. This particular ferry crossing that was right here was the actual ferry crossing for the Trail of Tears for families that were gathered from their homes, forced to leave their homesteads and uh, come here to Fort Cass and this is the way that they would have entered in Fort Cass. There was actually a truss-based bridge called the Fly Bridge, and then there was a ferry where the wagons and the horses um, were transported across the river. So we're here at the Cypress Grove that uh, is right in the middle of downtown Charleston. It's kind of a rare thing to see a cypress grove of this size in Tennessee, but this was planted by TVA in the 1930s um, for soil erosion and mosquito control. And then there was a fire and it was replanted in the 1960s. It is absolutely enchanting. And TVA, a few years ago, built an observation deck so that people could come and observe the cypress grove and also the wildlife within. There are many historical places around this Cypress Grove area. In the middle of the Cypress Grove is a spring that was called Agency Spring. And that is where the water source was when the uh, federal agency was here serving the Cherokee. The federal government of the United States had an agency here. And in modern day terms, we would think of that more like a, an embassy, but it was not exactly like that. But that's what we can relate it to. Um, they provided protection for the Cherokee and many, uh, several folks served as agents there, the Cherokee Indian agent, including uh, former Governor McMinn, the governor of Tennessee. On the other side of the Cypress Grove is the site of the home of Lewis Ross. He was a very famous vi businessman here in Charleston, but his dealings and his, uh, his business went all over the place. And at one time he was the richest man in what would be now Tennessee. His brother was the politician of the family. That was John Ross. And he was the principal chief of the Cherokee Nation for over 40 years. And he led the efforts to keep the Cherokee here in their homelands. In fact, he went all the way to the Supreme Court asking that the Cherokee people be able to stay on their lands. The Supreme Court agreed that they should, but President Andrew Jackson vetoed that decision. The interpretive trail that we hope to complete through the town of Charleston will at some point hook up to uh, this observation deck here at the Cypress Grove and connect the Cypress Grove ob observation deck with the public park and then connect to the Hiawassee River Heritage Center. We're so excited about that possibility and then from here it will go on to connect with the town of Calhoun at a river park there across the river.